My name's Heaven. I'm director of the hub, the Midec, Midec hub, as we now uh, know it. Um, and I'm here with uh, a whole myriad of different people from different backgrounds as we try to construct this huge project, a project that's never been created on this scale with this objective from nothing. We're starting with lots of individuals with different aims and objectives and we have to build something collectively that is the hub. My name is Joseph Day and I'm the director of the Center for Migration Studies which is based at the University of Ghana and I am also one of the co-directors of this South-South Migration Inequality and Development Hub. My name is Alison Phipps. I'm one of the four co-directors of the Midec Midec Hub and I am here in Nairobi to be part of leading the researcher training for the researchers from across our corridors. What is important for us is most of us do not work with the creative arts. This is the first time we are working with researchers from the creative arts. And this meeting was good because we were able to understand how things are done in the creative arts first. We from the social sciences, we were also able to discuss uh, different methodological approaches such as quantitative method, qualitative method, how to mix them, some of the benefits of mixing quantitative, qualitative and the creative arts methodologies. But we also do know that in trying to mix methods, since we are coming from different epistemological backgrounds, there are challenges. I think Crest Symbols is a collection of uh, the philosophy of life embedded in various symbols. So each symbol has a name, a meaning, and a little story or proverb around it. For example, there's, there's a symbol called Funtufu. I hadn't come across the, the Adinkura symbols before. One, I found them really beautiful. <laughs> and uh, so it, was, it, it, you, it served as a kind of framing device for our discussion around you know, how we feel about the project, you know, what are the challenges in the project, what's exciting about the project. So we were able to find symbols that we could associate with different aspects of our feelings. And Funtu Funufu is a, a depiction of a Siamese crocodile. And the saying that goes around it is, look at these crocodiles who share a stomach, yet fight over food. So in some ways, uh, some of the symbols tied in with what we thought about the project. In some cases, we had our own unique interpretations of those symbols. For instance, the one thing that I remember is the, the concentric circles, which was, I think, it is like the mother of all Edinburgh symbols, probably. So immediately, there is um, a, a space for discussing how um, you know, issues like equity, issues like interconnectedness, issues like, uh, you know, how we all own the resources that we find, you know, globally. So, so imagine there's enough to go around everybody, but we are totally engaged in fighting over what we cannot share. Uh, I'm Tim Unwin uh, from Royal Holloway University of London. I'm working on the ways through which digital and digital technologies can be used to reduce inequalities uh, in everything to do with migration. Um, it, I, I think there's so many things that excite me about this project that I'm not quite sure which to focus on first, but uh, the most important for me is probably meeting people and learning from people from such different backgrounds and different disciplines, different parts of the world. I think that's really exciting. So for me, that kind of represented a coming together of all the different uh, streams within uh, our project, all the different individuals, the variety of voices that we have, the diversity, but also at the same time coming together to kind of form a ripple effect. So for me, the, the circles represent a kind of ripple, a potential for impact. So I, I love that aspect. And then of course, there were so many. I mean, we were competing to, to stamp all those symbols on our little pieces of cloth. So I enjoy that very much, yeah. It's, it's an opportunity really to learn and uh, beginning to understand ways, I think, through which different cultural practices in research work and, and, and learning to uh, acknowledge each other's strengths and work together to uh, resolve you know, where we've got gaps. So 
that's that's the most important thing I think, and uh, the, the cultural richness and diversity of the whole research project. So you were able to learn from people what happens in the various areas where they are coming from. Apart from that, we also had a chance to once again go through our methodology. We put a lot of things on the research proposal that we want to achieve, and we now have to think about how practical some of these things are and what happens on the ground. So issues of data collection, we are adopting a multidisciplinary approach in the data collection and data analysis. So this meeting was good for us to hear from other people. Um, so we only had a brief conversation about political processes and mainly spoke there about actually the opportunities at the regional level. County levels to ensure that members are well protected in Ghana and also in Italy. Um, it's our first meeting. There's a great deal of energy and enthusiasm for new work, ideas for projects, for new meetings, for the content, for the methodology, for the research that we might do together. Real enthusiasm, a lot from some for the survey, a lot from others for the interviews and the qualitative data, a lot from others for some of the creative methods and a lot of commitment to one another to meeting and sharing and talking in between time, in between meetings, finding the right platform to do that on um, in social media so that we can get the work going. We learn from each other, from the north, from the south, uh, between among researchers from the south. So the sharing is a process. We can also harness migration to reduce this inequality and this poverty. And that is exactly what they have six to do. So the hub has a complicated or what I would say a complex management structure uh, made up of an advisory group. We also have a directorship, the executive group. The executive group is made up of the directors and all the co eyes in the respective countries. So even though we have designed a proposal and we need to deliver, we need to meet so that we'll be able to discuss how we are going to implement the nice things that we have put on the proposal. We've just got to the end of a very intense and full packed program of events and training. Um, a tricky thing to do because people come with different experiences, different understanding of their research, different levels of ability, some are highly experienced, some are just starting on the journey. So it's been a week of trying to bring people into a common framework and a common purpose. This is something where we can provide support. There was a definition accepted by all uh, UN member states last year. So I'm Jason Gagno. Uh, I work at the OECD Development Centre. I'm particularly excited about the prospects that the hub can bring uh, to wider policy circles. Um, for a number of reasons. One is the pluridisciplinary uh, approach it has on the subject of migration, and particularly in bringing um, the uh, pretty underdeveloped and under-researched um, subject matter of migration, that of South-South migration, and leveraging better development outcomes out of South-South South migration um, to wider audiences and wider uh, policy circles. It's all with knowledge has no end, in fact. And migration is multifaceted, it's multi-sectoral, and um, we need um, to know more to understand the intricacies of, um, of migration. There were some kind of binaries between North and South. Yeah. There was and there is a process in which that even the South is co-opted in the process of colonization. Yes. You know, a, 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 and then we become on autopilot, mm -hmm. you know, it's a form of governmentality in which yeah. that, you know, we get taken in the red. So uh, what would that mean and, and for us yeah. as, yeah. you know, intellectual, you know, inhabiting the earth? It's yeah. not just because we are from the South. We've been working for the last six months to build the foundations and the scaffolding of this project. So we brought together in the first instance all the co-investigators and our project partners for a two-day uh, meeting of the executive group to really think about where we're at and where we need to go moving forward in terms of the governance, in terms of the structures and all the things that make this a coherent whole. Then we had a wonderful meeting with our advisory board chaired by Charles Forsdick, but with representation from both our funder and the Department for International Development and from 
different people around the world who bring different things, gaps perhaps in our skills and knowledge, but also new ideas and who can critically reflect on what we're doing and help us to get to our goals. The Ethiopia South Africa corridor is one of the six uh, uh, migration corridors that the hub is uh, uh, working. And uh, in our corridor, uh, we engage the issue of inequality and migration uh, through the three uh, dimension of it, which is organized in, in the form of three work packages. Uh, we focus on first poverty and uh, uh, in, uh, inequality and how this relates to migration uh, dynamics, both way, the nexus between income inequality and uh, migration. The Malaysia-Nepal corridor is like in terms of Nepal, Malaysia is very important uh, since uh, till 2014 it had almost 50% of the migrants going to Malaysia and also now after even after 2015 it has more than 28% of migrants going to Malaysia so this is one of the biggest uh, migration route for Nepalese. It's also interesting in terms of gender because there's an, there has been an increase of almost 4,000 uh, by percentage of women going to Malaysia. Whether inequality leading to migration or migrate, migration creating or generating or exacerbating existing uh, inequalities. We have also a work package which looks at um, uh, inequality uh, uh, and, and childhood. In the country of origin in Ethiopia, we'll be focusing on children left behind, what happens to them, whether they have better life chances or they are in a worse condition than uh, families, uh, children of families without, uh, without migrants. Uh, we have also um, a work package which looks at the issue of flow in terms of uh, uh, finance, uh, goods and ideas or knowledge within the corridor. And, uh, and how this also relates to the issue of inequality. And in terms of gender, this gives an, us an opportunity to look beyond what we traditionally look at gender and migration. Most of the Nepali women work on domestic work, but in Malaysia they work in manufacturing. So this is a very good opportunity to study a different gendered uh, labor uh, participation of women. And time-wise, if you look at it, this is a very important juncture. The two governments across the corridor are trying to work on how to reduce the fatalities and the problems they have in migration across the corridor, mostly related to health. So it's a very important um, juncture also in terms of time. So these are countries who brought their researchers to the event so that we could really start to understand who our constituency is, who are the people who are going to build this research that we're intending to, de to, to deliver and what they bring in terms of their previous skills and experience and the insights they give us into the corridors and the context in which they're working because each of them brings something different but they're also working in different contexts with different languages, different issues, different challenges in some case and we need to understand those otherwise we can't kind of create the collective whole. We create categories mm -hmm. in order to distinguish ourselves in relation to others, mm -hmm. when, especially when we factor power and opportunities mm -hmm. into them. Mm -hmm. So the, the logic of take race, for example, or you can also use gender or geography in the case of Haiti, the distinction between rural and urban. That those, what those categories seek to achieve is to provide for a lot a framework of ever diminishing circles of inclusion mm -hmm. because you maximize your opportunities mm -hmm. uh, by uh, having uh, a few mm -hmm. who uh, graduate mm -hmm. uh, within that particular regime so you they make it impossible for you to ever establish the ultimate insight. Mm -hmm. Every time you think mm -hmm. in racial terms that you have got the ultimate insight, they keep pushing mm -hmm. you yeah. further yeah. and further. Mm -hmm. The problem today is that even attempts at decolonizing begin from the notion of essence. So it proceeds from a colonial outlook. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay? Which because is already it, problematic. Yeah, so, so Okay. So, so, so I think I think that for me that's where these notions of 
concepts and categories are really central. To say it's not about having a set of empirical material, it's about how do you conceptualize what you're looking at. La langue que nous parlons, le langage que nous utilisons. We're using the language. Ce pas le, nos langages à nous. Which is not our language. Ça fait que il y a des expressions qu'on utilise qui n'ont pas de sens dans We use expressions that don't even mean anything in our Donc, ce qui fait si eh, je devais, souvent je décris des choses, c'est quelqu'un qui n'a jamais été à l'école. Il ne comprend pas très bien ce que je vais dire. Parce que ce que j'utilise comme terme ne correspond pas, ne correspond pas à ça. Ce qui fait que bon, on peut dire qu'on décolonise, mais on se frappe so en réalité. Well, on est enfermé dans une vie contre on a eu pas. Déjà, le thème « décolonisation » suppose déjà qu'on est encore colonisé. Oui. 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 Voilà. Donc moi je, pr je préfère plutôt qu'on parle d'expérience. De, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Comment comment traduire le les expériences particulières de sorte à en faire des modèles. Mm -hmm. de faire, mm -hmm. des modèles. Mm -hmm. Je prends un exemple so euh, migrant. Mm -hmm. What is migrant in mm -hmm. my in my country? Migrant has strangers. Un mm migrant, -hmm. ça n'existe pas dans le langage. The word dans le langage. Migrant is a stranger. Un mm homme -hmm. qui n'est pas d'ici. Quelqu'un qui n'est pas d'ici. Mm -hmm. voilà. Donc il faut essayer de, de, de modéliser les expériences so particulières. Mm -hmm. Voilà, de manière, de manière euh, inductive, de manière inclusive, mm -hmm. de faire remonter mm -hmm. et de ne pas rester dans les standards. Mm -hmm. Because of people have constantly moved. And, and in Africa, we have had Burkina Faso, like any other part of Africa, have had the capacity to take the outside in and give them the best treatment. So, Uh, and that did not stop with colonialism. No. When, when the French came, we took them in and treated them the best, but they treated us as rubbish. Huh? So, so the, the thing then becomes, how do we provide for decolonization that, that factors in this disposition of the African to take the outside in and to welcome them? I wish this good English was good enough to translate the shock of hearing people mispronouncing their own names in order to sound more English. I wish this good English was good enough for untwisting of the tongue tied, bristly brush to briskly brush themselves aside. I really could have done with a better student's companion. So we were able to talk about a lot of safe, practical safeguarding issues on the third. We also talk about practical ethical issues. There are a lot of ethical considerations around issues of consent, issues of confidentiality, issues of anonymity, and we were able to discuss. What was more important here was that the discussions were participatory. That was followed immediately by um, a six, seven day training course, but not really a training course, more of a a kind of co-learning and sharing opportunity with 30 of the researchers from around the world who are working in the 12 countries in which our project is embedded uh, or and or allied to some of the work packages, the thematic strands of the project. So we had representation from Nepal and Malaysia, from Egypt, from Burkina Faso and Côte d'Ivoire, from Haiti, from Brazil. And this meeting exactly offered us the opportunity to discuss some of the challenges, some of the tensions around or tensions of a mixing of methods, so that was very good. We were also able to work on team building. This was the first time that most of us are meeting and the activities that we had allowed us to do a lot of uh, team building exercises, which I think were all good. We were also able to finally think about how we are going to deliver and the next steps after here. Because from this September, we are supposed to start with the data collection and data analysis. What is it? What What is it you're trying to do? How do you see the world? That's that's one of the things you do. I don't, sorry, philosopher sitting here smiling at me. I'm feeling a little bit uncomfortable no. now, but that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> This is, this is definitely methodology 101, okay? I'm Yula Alexandra Tapsova, I'm um, Sida Yurea Natama. I'm a member of the Tumkanga Zuru, I'm a member of the Tumkanga Zuru, I'm a member of the 
Côte d'Ivoire et Ligue d'Alé par contre Burkina Faso ni Burkina Faso ni Banto ni Ligue d'Alé Côte d'Ivoire ni Ban on dit que Ligue d'Alé Kanga n'a pas la sauver il a tant d'attente My name is Dr. Lianda Kandugi I'm a lecturer a senior lecturer at the Center for Migration Studies University of Ghana and I'm one of the uh, researchers on the South South Migration uh, Hub particularly to do with uh, the China uh, Ghana corridor. No, that's an I didn't in, I didn't understand corridor the corridors to operate in that way. I thought it was always uh, one constituency moving to another site, you know, moving to another country. So it was an interesting way to look at migration in, you know, in the south. And this gives us an opportunity to look at a two-way flow of migrants from China to Ghana, but then also from Ghana to China. You are right. So, um, within our work package, we are looking at the Chinese coming to Ghana and working in certain sectors. And we are also focusing on, we'll do a bit of that, same, that kind of research, also looking at Ghanaian traders who also go to China. To tease out some of the, the critical issues, with regards to inequalities, migration and inequality. So talking about how migration sometimes can lead to inequalities or how, on the other hand, inequalities can also trigger incidents of migration. I am Meron, Meron Zeleka from Ethiopia. Uh, I am an anthropologist by training and I'm in work package two of the MEDEC, MIDEC <laughs> project. So um, I, I was here in Nairobi for the training for researchers and it really went very well. I, I like the fact that we started by getting to know each other. And the very first exercise which we did was for me very significant in the way that it gave me a chance to know who is from where and what they do and how they are also re related to this overarching uh, project. Je m'appelle Alexandra Tapsoba et je suis Madame Nakama. Et je travaille sur le Work Package 6 sur les transferts de fonds des migrants et globalement les, les, les transferts de fonds. Et euh, donc je suis de l'ISSP de l'Université de Ouagadougou. So we started with that warm welcome, warm uh, introduction. And then the content, content wise, it also gave us, you know, an insight of like, uh, well, we all came with some prior information about what the project is, but it gave us a chance to get to know the details of the content and the different work packages and also how uh, our role in that work package in general. So, and also we got some basic trainings on methodology. Je m'appelle Sangli Gabriel. Je suis enseignant-chercheur à l'Institut supérieur des sciences de la population à l'Université Joseph Kizerbo à Ouagadougou. Je suis venu à Nairobi pour la formation dans le cadre de MIDEC. Mon intérêt pour le MIDEC, c'est ma volonté d'apporter ma contribution à l'étude des migrations, à contribuer à la réalisation de politiques efficaces Pratique pour soutenir le développement. Um, there was a lovely piece of feedback that I was just, just reading, which was that the builders have arrived. So it's been an exhausting 10 days. It's been an exhilarating 10 days. In some cases, it's been quite challenging. But I think at this point, after those 10 days, we have so much more of a sense of what we are and who we are and where we're going. And that really is the purpose of these meetings. Um, the builders of the house that our principal investigator, Professor Heaven Crawley, um, spoke about in her opening session, that we're here to build a house and it won't be uniform and it won't be um, exactly to everybody's liking, but everybody will begin to be able to build and decorate their room in a way that makes sense to them. And I think that metaphor of the house will stay with us quite a lot as we go forward in the work. We have some real concrete ideas about where we go from here in the sense that you know we have programs of work we have work packages we have work plans we have the scaffolding we know what we need to do and how we need to do it and who we need to be thinking about and who we need to be working with but the thing that's really unique about this hub and the thing that we have no control over is how those different things when they come together will gel, conflict, co-create, 
explode. We really have no sense of that because it's never been done before. And so I think the scaffolding is all well and good, but we don't know yet what the house will look like. And that will just emerge over time as people start to build. They start to build their relationships. They start to build their ideas, their concepts, their framework. They start to build their databases, their evidence. And then we'll get much more of a sense and it will adapt and it will change. And we need to be reflective and uh, flexible to those changes. And also some of the, also some of the very significant difficulties uh, for our researchers in some of the contexts they're working. But I think we have enough here to have a really good sense of direction. And for a project like this, that's a really important first step. We don't know where we'll be in five years time or even three years time. But I think when we come together collectively in a year's time, it will be very interesting to reflect back on where we are now and what's happened in the in-between and to learn from that to in terms of how we do our research but also how we work together. And because such a fundamental purpose of this hub is to change the way we work together, to value the knowledge, opinions, languages of the Global South partners who have so much expertise that's never been tapped into. So if, we, if we're able to do that, and after one year feel that we've fulfilled that objective, then that for me is a really important first step on that journey.